In this video, we'll take a look at how to utilize local height thresholding with HLSL in a material to calculate flow and flood areas in Unreal Engine 5 for this terrain. If I change my filter size, we can see that we can calculate flood areas or flows on the surface of water that would accumulate in these larger areas or more smaller areas. We also have the ability to change our intensity of this effect as well as a sensitivity to this so we can have more of a fall off or less of a fall off. To begin, I'll start off with a brand new project and I'll go to my landscape mode and load in my height map that I'm going to use for this terrain. Now, this approach that we're using to calculate these flows and flood areas is not really ideal for terrain. It's probably better to save out a mask from another software for this. But this can not only be useful for calculating flows and flood areas on a terrain, but also to generate interesting or complex patterns from other types of texture inputs. But in this case, we'll try using it on a terrain just to take a look at how it works. So I'm going to create this terrain height map that you can find on the Patreon, and I'll just bring it in here. It might be a bit too tall, um, so I'm just going to go in here and make its landscape a quarter of the height and then maybe also uh, offset it so it's not far below the, the grid. And I'll just zoom up onto it or focus on it by pressing F, and here is my terrain. So now we have something to work or at least test with. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just create our material, and we'll focus on the HLSL side of this first. So I'm going to call this material M underscore flood uh, flows, and I'll open up our material. And once I've opened up our material, what I'm gonna do here is start off by creating a brand new custom node. And I'll connect that custom node up to maybe base color and emissive color for now. So we have something to just preview here in this uh, material editor. And we're gonna create our most basic inputs that we'll need for our custom node. We're going to need some UVs, so I'll make a UV input. We'll also need a texture that we're going to use as height to calculate these flood and flows mask from. So I'll call that text because it will be a texture that we input. And then for UV, for now, I'll just put a texture coordinate node. So I'll go type texture coordinate. And for texture, I'm going to want to create a texture object and connect that up. Next, I'll have to load in the height map that we're gonna be performing this flood and flow calculation on. So I'll go to my texture object here and load in my height map, which I already have added into Unreal. So I'll go here to erosion and there's the image I wanna perform our flood and flow calculation on. And this is a height map. So pixel brightness or the brightness of those pixels refers to height. Brighter pixels are higher, darker pixels are lower elevation. Now the idea for this flood calculation or flow calculation is going to be really simple. There's a lot more complex ways to do this, but this way is quick and somewhat efficient. It doesn't really need to perform any sort of simulation. It's more of just height comparison. So what we're going to do is we're going to look through all the pixels of this image. And for each pixel, we're going to grab the surrounding pixels and average the height of those surrounding pixels. And if the surrounding pixels height is greater than the current pixel that we're on, we're gonna get the difference. And as that difference is larger, like the current pixel we're looking at is significantly lower than the surrounding areas, then the potential for flooding or water flows is increased. If it's not less than the average height of the pixels around it, then that area probably won't flood. So we'll give it like a zero value for its potential of flooding. And we'll do that for each pixel, and then we'll take all those values of their potential flooding, and we'll compare them against a sensitivity value, which will reveal or eliminate those areas from our mask. And that will essentially give us our flood or flow mask. 
So to put this into practice, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code since it'll be a lot easier for me to type the code and for you to see it. And the very first thing we're going to do is start off with our variables that we're going to need to have control over. So the first thing will be sensitivity. So this will be our sensitivity of the threshold or the, the flooding effect or flows. And then what we'll do is we'll do like a intensity. This is like the intensity of the, the flooding or the flows. You could increase that to produce a stronger mask. And then finally, we'll do a float two uh, for the filter size. And this is kind of at what distance in pixels around the current pixel in that image are we searching for details? And what this is gonna do is essentially allow us to extract either larger details or smaller and thinner flows and details. So this will kind of control um, our result for how big and how small those floods and flows are. And uh, this can be all adjusted after and turned into parameters. But for now, we're just going to deal with it as code. Next, we'll load in our image. So I'm going to do a float uh, height. That'll be the height of our current pixel. Again, I'm not using a float three or anything, just a float value because it's a single value. We know we're dealing with a black and white map or a mask because we're dealing with height. Uh, so I could really just, when I sample in my texture here, so when I create my 2D texture sample, um, I'll sample in that texture and I'll make sure that I bring in the UVs here and only use the red channel because our image might be something with color, but we'll treat only our red channel as the height or if it's black and white, um, we'll just use the red red channel of it and we're going to do the same thing for the current pixel here which is the height and then the surrounding pixels heights as well so we'll do something like height l for left height r for right height u for up and then height d for down and it's pretty much all the same for each one of these the only thing that we have to change is we have to offset the uvs to get those surrounding pixels so here for the left value of the the surrounding pixel we'll do a float to we'll minus our filter size that we have here which is this value and we'll do the x value and then y value we can just leave uh, zero. And we're going to do that same thing for left, right, up, down. So it's going to go uh, negative, then positive, and then negative, and then positive. So something like this. I'm just going to paste these all in here and then change them. So negative, positive, and then zero, and then negative filter y, and then zero on that side and then positive filter size y so that's it now what we have to do is average all these pixels to get the average height of the surrounding pixels so we're going to do another float called average height and we'll just make that equal our height left plus height right plus height up and height down and since there's four things that we're averaging here, uh, we can either divide by four or multiply by 0 0.25 to get the average height of those. Next, we need to check to see if the current pixel's uh, flooding value is more or less. So what we're just going to do is do another uh, variable called float flooding, and we'll make that return a value. So I'm going to do max and I'll make the minimum zero and then the maximum average height minus height. And what this is going to do is if the average height is something higher, like 10, and the current height is five, you do 10 minus five. That means the area that we're currently in five is lower than the average height, 10. So the resulting value will be five that makes it a high potential for flooding that will return a value of five. However, if our average height was lower than the current height, if our average height is something like five, but our current height is maybe something like 10, much, much taller. Well, if you take five and you minus 10, it ends up with a negative value 
uh, and this will end up just returning zero because its minimum is zero. So then it has no potential of flooding. So that's kind of how this will work. It'll give us uh, an intensity factor for how possible that area is to flood. And then once we have that, we can make a condition to check that. So for our condition, we can do something like float result, our final result. We could do flooding. If it's bigger than our sensitivity value, uh, then we can return our flooding multiplied by our intensity. Otherwise, we just return zero, like no, no, no value in our mask. It's like a branch, essentially. We could do it this way. Totally works fine. Uh, we could also do it using another max value. I could also do uh, the exact same thing by returning max and making the minimum flooding minus our sensitivity and then have our maximum value be zero. And that way we can take that, multiply it by our intensity, and that'll do pretty much the exact same thing without using a branch. Both ways work, both ways are suitable, um, is really personal preference. In some ways, you could argue that this is a little bit more efficient because it's not using a branch, but again, it's something so simple, probably won't matter. And then finally, we return our value. So return um, our result or return, actually, I'll return our result, and that's our, our ending result. And if we want to be a specific color, like if we were to do this um, with three different sensitivity values and create like a red, green, and blue mask with three different channels, you know, we could return something like float three and put like result one, uh, result two, result three, or however you want to structure it. But in this case, we'll keep it simple. We'll just return the result. And that's pretty much our, our full code here. So if we take all this and we go back into Unreal and we put that into our, our custom node here and we check for any errors, well, look at that. I already can see those flood areas. So now we're taking this height map and we're extracting those flood areas. Now from here, you could turn a lot of these into parameters or variables. Uh, you might also have to increase the strength a little bit more. Like maybe I'll go over here and multiply the result for our base color just a bit and also throw it into emissive so we could easily see it. I'm just going to do this for visibility purposes and then I'll throw it on my terrain. But if I do throw this onto my terrain, um, texture coordinates not going to work. They'll tile over our terrain. So I'd have to use something like a landscape layer coordinates, or I'd have to divide our texture coordinates by the size of our terrain and, and get the fractional value. But this might be easier. And I know I'm using a, a thousand and nine pixel height map. So I'll, I'll type that for our mapping scale. And if I took this material now, just as an example, see if it lines up, throw it, threw it in here to our landscape material. There it is. There's all of our calculated flows for our terrain. And if we wanted to change that, you know, I can go in here and say, okay, let's calculate larger values. Uh, let's make the sensitivity lower and save that. And then, you know, now we expand that and kind of calculate the more broad areas of of flooding and flows. So really easy to do. And again, this is not ideal for a terrain. You could probably save it out to a mask like this for flows from another software. Uh, but this could be useful for complex pattern or texture generation in your HLSL materials or a lot of other things as well. But it shows you how doing something complex can have a lot of accurate and complex ways to calculate uh, those types of effects, but also it can be done much more simpler with other approaches. And in this case, really just getting average pixel height and doing a bit of comparison and thresholding. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below. And if you are part of the Patreon, which you can find a link to down in the description below, you'll also get access to the PDF for this video, which goes over all the steps from this video in a little bit more detail. And you'll also get access to the code and to the materials used within this video.